Welcome to the show. I'm Michael Johnston. Joining me today to talk about tax efficient investing is Tyler Miller. Tyler is a CPA, CFP, and SEMA professional working as a wealth manager and tax specialist at Rame and Gorel Wealth Management. Tyler, thanks for coming on. Of course, happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Michael. It's uh, it's good to be here. Like I said, so we are talking today about net unrealized depreciation. Before we dive in, Tyler, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your firm. Yeah, like I said, so I work at Raymond Garrell Wealth Management as a wealth manager and tax specialist. I'm one of the six certified financial planners here on staff, and I'm also a CPA and SEMA professional. Um, you know, we, I started my career at Deloitte as a corporate tax specialist. Mm -hmm. I found out pretty quickly that that wasn't the passion I had for my career, and I really wanted to help out individuals. Which made which stemmed my my move to the financial services industry and Raymond Garrell Wealth Management. So we're a registered investment advisor, and we help successful families fully optimize their financial picture. Um, from you know, I like to coin the phrase "outsource CFO" for individuals, because you know most financial advisors they put together a nice portfolio, right? They do the investment management piece, but in our eyes, that's that's just one piece of the financial picture. Mm -hmm. Look at everything from tax optimization, investment management, of course, estate planning, um, to the full financial picture of in-depth financial planning in the end. I love that. I, I like to tell my wife I'm the, the CFO of our family. So uh, how to, everyone <laughs> needs a CFO, whether it's for uh, for your, your family um, or, or your company. Uh, so we're talking today about NUA, and we're going to get into the weeds here. But Tyler, start, give us the, the high, high level, the elevator pitch, the summary of, of what NUA is and why it's potentially valuable. Yeah, to really understand the, the capabilities and the benefits of NUA, I think you first you have to understand how a 401k pre-tax distribution or an IRA distribution works from a taxable standpoint. So mm -hmm. as most people know, whenever you take a whenever you take money out of a 401k or an IRA, it's taxed at ordinary income rates, right? So those can be as high as 37% for high earners. What NUA does, it, it allows you to take company stock out of a 401k plan and put it into a brokerage account while only paying taxes on the cost basis of that stock. Right, and 37%, that's just at the, the federal level, right? Like I'm in Oregon, I think our, our state tax rate um, gets up to 10, 10 plus percent. You're lucky, you're in Texas, I think it's zero yeah. there. Um, exactly. But for for some of us to be in these these high income uh, state income states uh, can can get even even higher there. Exactly. Um, okay, great. So so let's let's talk about who who can and and who should execute this strategy. So really, it can apply to anybody with company stock in their four hundred one k. It's really beneficial to those that have highly appreciated stock within their four hundred one k. So obviously the way that NUA works is that you pay taxes on that cost basis piece, right? So a lower cost basis means that more money is coming out of the 401k and being taxed at a lower amount. So in, in general, it, it works best for individuals with, the, with company, company stock at a lower cost basis. Got it. So let's let's really dive into this. Let's use me as this hypothetical investor example. Let's say I mentioned I'm in Oregon. So let's say I've been working at Nike for uh, 30 years. Nike stock, I think it's done pretty well over that time period. I'd have to look yeah, it up, sure. but uh, I'm sure. fairly confident that it's it's quite a bit higher. So let's say I'm, I'm finally leaving Nike. Uh, I've got $500,000 of, of company stock, but the basis of that is only 50k meaning uh, i only paid fifty thousand dollars over the course of my career for that stock so it's all in it's 10x uh and let's say i'm in a, a tax bracket and to keep it simple we'll just use the federal let's say i'm in a, a 24 percent tax bracket yeah um let's talk through some of the numbers of, of how this how this might work or what i would do to take advantage of this yeah so like you said you've got five hundred thousand dollars of that company stock and and that let's just focus on that piece of the 401k. But mm -hmm. basically, you would take that five hundred thousand dollars of company stock and you would move it into a brokerage account during what's called a full and final distribution, which we can get into. And you would only pay taxes on the cost basis of fifty thousand dollars. So at twenty four percent, what is that like twelve thousand dollars in taxes? Mm -hmm. So now you've got a difference. You've got five hundred thousand dollars in a brokerage account. 
And the appreciation on it of $450,000 is what they call net unrealized appreciation, right? You can defer the net unrealized appreciation taxes and it's taxed at long-term capital gains rates. You basically defer those taxes until you sell the stock, either for diversification or cash flow purposes. And long-term capital gains rates are much more preferential to the ordinary income rates that can, like we've talked about, be 37%, but in your instance, 24%. Right, right. And a lot of times the cap gains rates, those are going to vary too, depending on your income level. For a lot of people, it's going to be in the, uh, a lot of people, it's going to be 15%, some higher earners, it might be, it might be 20%. But Correct. it's, you know, it's, it's a great point. I think a, a lot of, uh, that a lot of folks miss, there's a lot of great things about 401ks, qualified plans, tax advantage plans, uh, relative to a taxable account. You're, you're sheltered from some taxes. You can defer some taxes. Yeah. But when you take money out, you're taxed generally, you're taxed if it's a tax deferred plan, you've got to pay those taxes eventually. So when yep. you take money out, you are taxed at ordinary income rates, yep. which are typically higher than capital gains rates. So that's kind of the, the delta here, bringing yourself down from that ordinary income rate coming down to a, a capital gains rate. Am I, am I kind of thinking about that the right way? Yeah, let, let's kind of dive into that. Um, for individuals, you know, obviously the tax code in the U.S. is what we call a progressive tax code, which means that, you know, your first X amount of income is taxed at, you know, 10 percent today. And then the next, you know, whatever amount of income is taxed at 12, then 22, then 24. Then you get up into the 32 and the higher tax brackets. Right. So if you're in that 10 to 12 percent tax bracket, your capital gains rates on long-term capital gains is actually 0%. So you're better off by 10 to 12% on that. And then if you're in the 22 to 35% tax bracket, then your long-term capital gains rates is 15%. So you're saving at least 7%, but on the high side, 20%. It's not until you get into that 37% tax bracket that you actually start paying 20% on your long-term capital gains, and you're still saving 17% even on the highest end. So there's opportunities here to sell this un net unrealized appreciation stock at a 0% long-term capital gains rates, which is really one of the most beneficial things about this strategy. Right, right. So it, as I'm thinking through this, I think there's some potential wins here, then there's some uh, potential drawbacks. Because one of the drawbacks is you've got to pay some money today, right? Because yeah. you do need to pay taxes today um on the basis portion of it and, and that would be at, at ordinary income rates is that right that's correct so it starts to make sense if the basis is just a small piece of your total portfolio if in my example you know that the stock has has 10 x um and the basis is a small portion of it maybe it, it makes more sense but i think you know to drive this this point home to listeners this is something that you kind of need to run the numbers on and determine if it makes sense given your situation is that right that's correct because and in all reality, 401k plans are different on how they account for the company stock portion mm -hmm. of your investments. You know, some keep basis of each and every share that you've bought. Some keep mm -hmm. an accumulated basis of the stock that you've bought over time. So looking, taking a dive into the numbers with a professional always makes sense whenever you're applying a, a you know, very complex strategy like this from a tax standpoint. Yeah. And then how is, what's the terminology? Are you making an NUA election? Are you applying net unrealized appreciation? And, and how do you actually do that? Is there an additional, an additional form that's required or how does this happen practically? So practically, um, it happens during a full and final distribution from a mm -hmm. 401k plan. And typically the way that we coin it to the 401k administrator is that we want to take a lump sum distribution and take special NUA treatment. And then we tell them these shares of company stock that we wanna take NUA treatment on. And then during the distribution, they distribute those shares to a brokerage account in the individual's name, and then they distribute the rest of these shares into an IRA or the cash as a check to go to a uh, rollover IRA. Got it. Okay, so there's a, there's a lot of mechanics happening behind behind the scenes here to to oh, make yes. this to make this all work out. So you've used this term a couple of times now, and I want to dive into this full and full and final distribution. So I think that you can only take advantage of this at certain times. Is that right? And and separating or, or leaving your company is is one of them. But are there uh, are there certain times when investors are able to do this? 
So yeah, there's a few different rules and really investors have the ability to take NUA treatment. It's entirely up to them after a few different things happen, right? Um, one of the biggest rules is called trigger points, right? So there's four different trigger points that qualify an individual to be able to take net unrealized appreciation. The first one is gonna be separation from service. So that means that you've left the company, um, you've retired, you know, you've, you've taken a different job, et cetera. The second one is 59 and a half. So that would happen mm -hmm. only, that would only be the second one if you've separated from service prior to 59 and a half. And then the third one is if you become disabled and the last one is whenever you pass away. So those are really the four different times that you have the ability to take special NUA treatment, right? So after you, let's just say a 62 year old individual separates from service, right? That's gonna be their trigger point that allows them to take NUA treatment on their 401k plan. And what they would do is they would take a full and final distribution is how we talk about it, which means that they call the 401k administrator and that they're gonna clear out all the funds that are there in the 401k. The company mm -hmm. stock can typically be rolled over in kind to either an IRA or a brokerage account. For the NUA okay. portion, that's the portion that would go to the brokerage account, right? The, um, the rest of the company stock, if they didn't want to sell it, would go to an IRA, and then the remainder of the investments would typically be rolled over as cash, as a check written to whatever IRA uh, custodian they're utilizing for that. Got it. Okay, so there, there are some, it sounds like there are some tax efficient um, distribution strategies that this opens the door for, that, that NUA treatment opens the door for, for um, and especially for high net worth investors. Is that is that right? Well, yeah. So after you take the net unrealized appreciation treatment, um, like I said, entirely up to the investor on when to take it, but it has to be after one of those trigger points. And, you know, one of the things that you want to be aware of is, so basically the trigger point uh, gives you a time frame to take NUA treatment. So after that, if you take a partial distribution after that trigger point, you have to take net unrealized appreciation prior to year end for it to be eligible, right? Or you have to wait until the next trigger point passes. But after you take net unrealized appreciation treatment, there are some tax efficient distribution strategies that you can apply depending on your situation. Let's take you know, your example, your situation. You worked at Nike, you paid $50,000 for the stock over your career, and then it's worth 500,000. You've now taken net unrealized appreciation and it's, it's all gone to a brokerage account, right? But you've retired. So you're not, you're not working at Nike anymore. You're not making any more income. You know, you're starting, let's just say that you're 62. I know you're not, but uh, you know, you're starting at basically, and you haven't taken social security yet. You're starting at basically zero taxable income for the year. Okay. Now let's assume that you need $100,000 to live on over, you know, each, each and every year. You need $100,000 to make your world go round. Uh, assuming that the stock doesn't appreciate over the next five years, you know, that's $500,000 you can live on for five years. And as we talked about, until you get up into the 22% tax bracket, you're paying 0% on long-term capital mm -hmm. gains. Well, for a single individual, the... 12% uh, tax bracket starts around $45,000 of income, but you have to remember you also have a $14,000 standard deduction. And for married individuals, it's really the 22% tax bracket doesn't start until you have about $90,000 of income. And after that standard deduction, in all reality, it's, it's much closer to $115,000 to $120,000 of income. So let's just say that, Michael, you sell $100,000 worth of your Nike stock over the year and you're retired so you don't have any other income mm -hmm. to sell that 90 or uh, to sell that hundred thousand dollars of nike stock you realize ninety thousand dollars of long-term capital gains well that's less than the married filing joint bracket where it breaks into the 22 percent so you pay zero percent long-term capital gains rates on that full portion of of long-term capital gain so you've gotten your NUA stock out and you've only paid taxes on the $50,000. And then the appreciation of the stock, you paid 0% on. So you, you're in a much better scenario than paying 24% on $500,000 like, like you would if you did a normal distribution of your 401k. 
I, I love that, Tyler. I think that um, I've noticed a tendency. We think a lot about how to get money into these tax advantage accounts, how to grow it. I hardly ever hear people talk about tax efficient withdrawal strategies and, yeah. and some of the, the tactics and the strategy and the timing around that. But what you just walked through is is an incredible example of of the power of that, of, you know, you're essentially generating, I like to think of it as, as generating alpha, um, yeah. you know, you're paying less in taxes, that's your, your bottom line. Like you, you, you can't eat pre-tax returns, right? What you, what ultimately you, uh, you've used to put the, the food on your table is what you're left with, uh, after taxes. Yeah. Um, and that's a, oh man, that's a great example of, of the withdrawal piece of it being super important for what you're left with at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, furthermore, I mean, what we run into a lot is just like you said, individuals beef up these pre-tax accounts during their career because they're doing very well. They're saving in a pre-tax manner. It's not, I mean, it, we run across individuals all the time with large pre-tax balances, but mm -hmm. most of their money is invested in those pre-tax accounts to where, you know, in order to get the money in their hands after tax, they're going to have to pay federal income, some states, state income taxes on it. So this is a very efficient way to take a full and final distribution from a 401k and, you know, be more efficient with your, your tax buckets is what we would call it. Because we look at, you know, three different tax buckets. You have a pre-tax tax bucket, which is taxable to you whenever you take a distribution from it. But obviously you got the tax, um, the tax deduction on the front end. You have a Roth tax bucket, which is tax-free growth forever, but mm -hmm. there was no tax deduction on the front end. And then there's the after-tax assets. So for individuals that are heavily invested in pre-tax accounts, this allows them to have some more diversification from a tax standpoint and have money in both a pre-tax and after-tax account to where they can apply tax-efficient distribution strategies throughout their retirement. I, I, I love that. Um, great conversation here about how this, this NUA treatment uh, kind of opens the door for Additional ways to add tax efficiency at the in, in retirement. Um, I love this, uh, Tyler. Well, you mentioned that you got into this because you wanted to to help individuals. Uh, I think we've done that. I think hopefully we've uh, so a few light bulbs are going off and people are thinking hmm, I might be able to take advantage of this. Uh, yeah. And I, I'd like to think we've we've created some some tax efficiency and uh, some tax free wealth for folks today. Oh yeah. Um, so before I let you go here, Tyler, where can folks go to learn more about you? If they want to get in touch with you. Yeah, that we've got a company website where we post financial insights that dive into different strategies like net unrealized appreciation on your company stock, um, like some other strategies of like backdoor Roth IRAs, mm -hmm. et cetera. You can also, we also post those insights on LinkedIn, which you can find um, and drop us a follow and you'll see, you know, our updates all the time on how to optimize your investments or optimize your taxes throughout retirement. Um, but yeah, you can find us online. I mean, we've, we've got a pretty good presence there. Yeah, they do. I will, I will testify to that. You guys are putting out some great content. Um, and I'll put all those in the show notes, a, a link to the, the LinkedIn page, to the company website. Uh, and I'll, I'll put people to, to Tyler as well, if they want to connect directly with you on LinkedIn. Um, Tyler, this was awesome. Thanks for coming on. Uh, let's have you back sometime. This is great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michael. would love to be back. Thanks for having me.